Hi, my name is Ricardo, and I was born in Puerto Rico. Many people stop and stare at me on the streets. One day I went grocery shopping and this woman yelled, Get out of here, you're scaring my child! I was just picking out cereal. On another day, a man beat me up and said, Don't be such a freak. Let me tell you why. When my mom was pregnant with me, she contracted the avian bird flu and became very, very ill. The doctors told her there was a 60% chance she would die in five weeks, and there was an 80% chance that she would have a miscarriage. But my mom was a fighter. She conquered all the surgeries and took all the medication she needed in order to survive. The flu was cleared out and there was a 95% chance she and I would live, but the flu had already affected me. Doctors had told her that they would have to wait and see how I would turn out. Then I was born, but my face was deformed and barely developed with lumps and bumps and weird scars on my face. My mom says I was beautiful in her eyes, but the doctors looked repulsed. For the next 27 months of my life, I was in and out of the hospital to fix my face. I even had to get illegal plastic surgery at the age of three. The doctors did everything they could, but my face still looked weird, with hundreds of scars left from removing the bumps and stitching the scars. But the worst part? I had a beak for a nose. It was large, hooked, and round. It really was the closest thing to an actual beak. When I first went to public school, the kids stared at me and called me names. There was one girl in my class called Gloriana, who would pick on me and shove me out of my seat. She would laugh in my face and say, You'll never get a girlfriend with that beak, Ricardo. She would also tell her friends that I had a huge crush on her, and that I was a creep. All the girls would whisper and laugh at me and call me ugly. The boys in my class would beat me up and make sure I wouldn't get picked for gym teams. When I told the teachers, they would say, Well, look at you. You're scary to other kids. One teacher even told me, I would never let my kid near you. He might get whatever disease you have and turn ugly. And we can't have that, can we? I told my mom about this after school, and she was furious. She drove me back to school and yelled at the teacher. What did you say to my son? Nothing. He was scaring the other kids. One more time and he will be expelled, the teacher smiled. She was lying straight to my mom's face. My mom took my hand and dragged me out of there. She said that we had to move and get away from all the bullying at school and all the unwanted attention. We moved to another town and I started going to a school for kids with disabilities. Even though I was perfectly fine, it was better in the special school because there were kids in wheelchairs and kids who had glasses and no one judged each other. But then, Gloriana moved to the same town and I saw her whenever I went to buy groceries. By now, I was 16 and all of that bullying happened 8 years ago. Gloriana would just stare at me as I ignored her every time I saw her. But one day, she came up to me and said, I'm sorry for how I treated you when we were kids, Ricardo. I replied that it was no problem and that we could become friends. One day when we were hanging out, a guy came up to us and said, Why are you hanging out with this guy? He's so ugly and you're so pretty. Gloriana said, he's my friend, and I don't care what he looks like. Over time, we became really close, and we were able to share many things with each other. She revealed to me about all her insecurities she had from being severely abused at home, and how she took it out on me. I remember thinking about how I used to villainize her, and how I thought of her as a demon. But that was only my side of the story. I didn't know she was suffering too. Looking back, all I see is a hurt little girl. Because of this, we became very close and dependent on each other. Me because she defended me to other people, and her because she never had anybody stand by her and support her. I remember stopping her mid-sentence in a conversation and saying I loved her. She revealed that she felt the same, and the rest is history. She was my first love, and I was hers. Fifteen years later, I graduated from college, got a steady job, and Gloriana was my wife. And we had two kids. I learned to love myself for who I am, and to find people in life that won't judge you only by the way you look.